okay uh, we're going to understand uh, rectangular components of vector in this video for that let us begin by drawing two vectors uh, let us say let us say this is vector a1 we will call this vector a1 and uh, let us say this is this is vector a2 this is vector a2 to get uh, the resultant of these two i need to complete a parallelogram so i will try to complete a parallelogram so i'll draw a line parallel to vector a2 right and then i'll draw a line parallel to vector a1 so this is it so i have completed the parallelogram and we know that if i draw this diagonal the diagonal is the resultant of vector a1 and a2 so this is vector a which is the resultant of vector a1 and a2 conversely i can also write that a1 and a2 are the components of vector a right. a is the resultant of vector a1 and a2 and uh, a1 and a2 are the components of vector A. Now, let me draw vector A again. Let us say I draw vector A again, approximately of the same magnitude. Right? Now, I can uh, put vector A in the xy coordinate system. So, this is the origin. Now, let us make this as the origin and I can draw x axis the y axis this is the y axis same and this is the x axis so let us say this is the y, x axis and this is the y axis right and let us say this angle is theta so what i have done is i have placed vector a on the x y coordinate system now i can draw perpendiculars uh, within a minute you will understand why we are doing all this i can draw perpendiculars from the tip of the vector onto the two coordinate axes right. and by dropping these perpendiculars what I have done is I have completed a parallelogram so if I call this O P Q and R so O P Q R becomes a parallelogram and thereby using the same logic which we used over here O P right O P is one of the components of vector a let me write it over here this is vector a and or is the other component of vector a so this is so these two op and or are the components of vector a right. this vector since uh, this component rather since it is on the y-axis it is known as a suffix y and this component or is known as ax since it is on the x-axis so we have got vector a and its components are a y and x so i can write down over here vector a is equal to vector a x plus vector a y and this could be written as a x into i plus a y into g where i and g are the unit orthogonal vectors along the x axis and the y axis respectively right so i from this i get the equation a is equal to ax vector a is equal to vector ax plus vector ay okay. further if uh, i take this angle as theta then what do i get then if i take sine theta sine theta will be qr upon hypotenuse so let i can get this sine theta right sine theta is equal to qr by OQ. Right. Therefore, sine theta is equal to OR, O uh, rather QR. Right. You know, QR is AY. So AY upon A. Therefore, I get. Let me write over here. AY is equal to A sine theta. And using the same logic, that is getting cos theta, I'll get AX is equal to A cos theta, because cos theta will be adjacent side OR, which is AX upon hypotenuse. Right, so, right. so a y is equal to a, a y is equal to a sin theta and a x is equal to a cos theta 
So with this, what I have done is I have been able to find out the magnitude of the components, the magnitude of components of vector A. So and that turns out to be A y is equal to A sin theta and A x is equal to A cos theta. So I have found out com magnitude of components in terms of magnitude of vector A. Also, if I divide these two equations, then I will get A y upon A x is equal to A sin theta upon A cos theta and therefore a y by a x is equal to tan theta. So tan theta is equal to a y by a x. So this gives me the relationship between the two components and the angle that vector a makes with the x axis. Please note that theta is the angle that is being made with the x axis not with the y axis. So tan theta is equal to a y by x. Let me also put this in blocks because this is also the magnitude of the components and this is the angle that theta, the angle that A makes with x axis. So coming back to this equation, A is equal to Ax plus Ay. These are components of uh, vector A and since they are on the x and y axis, these components, they are known as rectangular components, rectangular components of vector A right? because they are on the x rectangular components of vector a and vector y and uh, if instead of having uh, two axes y and x if i have the third axis the z axis also right so imagine there's a the third axis over in this particular direction then we will have three components let us try to draw let us try to squeeze in the diagram over here let me see right so let us say that we have got three axis right I'm trying to draw a cube and then I'll show the three axis in that oh, okay I think I'm on page let me get it over here right so okay so this is the y axis this becomes the z axis and this is the x axis. Now in this if I take a vector A as starting from here and ending over here, right? Of course I can take it anywhere, but let us say I take this as vector A. I hope you are able to visualize this. It is starting from the surface of this cuboid which is behind to the surface which is in the front right so it is kind of a, a diagonal of this particular cuboid right uh, sort of a diagonal right so vector a now this vector a will have uh, components on all the three axes right for example this will be the this will be a x the component along the x axis and this will be the component along z axis and this and the component along y axis so it has got three components and vector a can be written as a x plus a y plus a z and these three are known as the rectangular components again these are also rectangular components of uh, vector a and which can also be written as a x i a y j plus a z so we can represent uh, vector a in terms of um, unit orthogonal vectors where a x a y and a z are the magnitudes of the components a x a y and a z so these are the rectangular components of uh, the vector a as as you already know vector a can have infinite number of uh, components right so if I take any vector randomly over here it can have a large variety of uh, components for example this could be the components or these two could be the components or still uh, if I take these two could be the components so strictly speaking vector A can have infinite number of components but the components which are uh, which are there on the x y and z axis on the x y and z axis they are known as rectangular components of vector A vector A. Uh, hope this has uh, uh, clarified uh, doubts about rectangular components of uh, a vector.